do that. And so we will have a recording for all those colleagues who did register or who are unable to come. Welcome. I'm very happy we are having this theme here and especially for having uh, Eugenio and Denis from the same project to, uh, to maybe uh, give uh, enough background. But the main thing is that we really uh, want to invest in uh, mindful communication. And this is another um, episode in this series that we have uh, started uh, somewhere last year at the end of the year. And this time very special, nonviolent communication and in, uh, in presence. I have um, uh, quite a few people that I know that are working in, uh, in prisons. There are people in, uh, in Rotterdam, in Amsterdam, in the Netherlands, but also in New York, in the Bronx, um, people in, uh, in Rome. So I think um, it is very important that we, we know this and we, uh, we work with, um, we, we understand what you're doing. Because I think that if we want to work on mindful societies, the people in prisons have a particular exclusion. And it is very important that uh, we pay attention there. So for today, um, we are grateful to you, Ajania, that you take the time to share this. I know you're very busy. Uh, for those who don't know, all of you here know, but for those who are listening and don't know, Eugenio is also uh, a board member of Iamba. He has served for many, uh, several years. And Eugenio is also a member of the exchange team, the active branch of Iamba um, that organizes these uh, frequent uh, meetings on continuous learning. So without further ado, Eugenio, may I invite you to first say a few things on why on earth are you going there? Um, and um, what is your personal experience being so close to um, having people um, uh, secluded? I mean, it's for me, it's not natural that we humans put other humans in a in a box and put, uh, take away the key. And yep. um, then. Um, I hope you share what you're doing there, why and uh, how we can learn from you. Thank you very much, everyone, for being here, and especially you, Eugenio, for sharing. Thanks, Katerina. And we welcome also uh, Laure and Magdalena. Thanks for being here. And I'll, I'll, we, we have this uh, new format. We, it, this, this meeting is, will, will take an hour, basically. So <clears throat> the format we have is I will, I will talk a bit about what I do and what I don't do. And um, I will try to speak of my personal experience um, and the, the, I will maybe speak about 20 minutes, 25 minutes max. And then if you have questions to clarify, and then we can have um, also themes coming in about this this might ring a bell in other areas because <clears throat> it is not just about uh, prisons it's about uh, really inner and outer prisons that's that's the what i had in mind so i'll, I'll um i just have some <clears throat> some some slides just to support what i will share um, to give you some, um, to explain uh, why it is so uh, nourishing and frustrating at the same time. <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll share my screen and I'll just, uh, let me see. So you just see me in a small window and I hope it's okay. <clears throat> so the reason why I I, I wanted to speak um, about this theme of inner and outer prisons is basically because it is an adventure to to want wanting to go 
to do stuff in prisons. It's it's really complicated um, on a practical level. And um, it's very easy to get there if you have done something wrong or if you're waiting for a trial or are convicted, then it's it's very easy to enter there. But it's it's difficult to <clears throat> to do stuff in prisons. And at the same time, there's a lot of taboo, a lot of um, ideas and beliefs about what's the, the what's happening in prisons. And I think it's important for me to 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 give some um, just valid information. Um, and the reason why I speak about inner and outer prisons is because I <clears throat> I also I also volunteer in palliative care. I've been doing that for ten years, visiting sick persons um, at home with, that have really um, severe uh, diseases, and 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 that's been really a joy for me. For ten, I've been doing that for ten years, and I've been uh, doing stuff in prisons for ten years. And the reason why I continue doing both is because it's it's very joyful and and of course it's um, we're talking about places or persons that have a lot of suffering. So it's why am I doing this? Well, maybe I'm I'm, I'm attracted to those kind of environments or situations because it, it, it brings up my compassion and it cultivates my compassion. Uh, so I think that's, that's one of the key I have been uh, reflecting on since 10 years, the reason why I'm doing this. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm just <clears throat> in, in a nutshell, I'm I'm, I'm a mindfulness teacher, but I'm also trained in the nonviolent communication. I've been doing that for 10 years and I'm trained in, I'm not a um, health professional, but I'm trained in a lot of uh, short therapies and uh, emotional regulation. And <clears throat> I train in a lot of stuff that makes sense for me that I can bring. Um, in different settings and um, I wanted to train with Fleet Mall from the Mindfulness Prison Institute in the US because uh, he, he created this um, um, emotional intelligence based on mindfulness, this program that is amazing and that has been arising from his, his experience in jail actually. He, he served 15 years in jail and when he got out, he, he, it was his life's mission, basically, to 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 do something uh, interesting uh, with that population. Um, so the reason um, I, I work on on, on um, I work with different projects in prison. Uh, currently with three different projects. I select, train uh, and supervise um, prisoners that act as a relay in uh, prison. That is uh, a wonderful shift of paradigm to believe that uh, prisoners can be useful for other prisoners. Um, that's why I'm so excited about this project I've been doing for a year now. Uh, so we carefully select uh, in two different prisons in the Paris region. We select uh, potentially um, um, potential uh, prisoners that have a good record, that they don't have addictions, for instance, and we select them. We interview them, and we interview them with um, with the prison officers and with the direction, the management, and then we train them in, for five days to, in active listening and in um, care relationship. And then they are 
identified in the different places in prison as um, active uh, listeners uh, to listen to people that um, might be angry or just need to be li listened to. Um, and then we meet every month for supervision, for training, for additional training. And so, yeah, it's this is just one of the projects I've been working on. And um, it, it is really, uh, <laughs> it gives me a lot of joy because um, because it gives joy to to people, because it it um, satisfies sense of uh, recognition, of gratitude, of being useful. Also, that's important, but not being a savior. Being useful as a relay, but but not having this burden of being a savior. And I, I will speak about it a bit um, later on. Um, so, <clears throat> so communication is, um, is very important for me. And uh, the reason why it's important is because, um, it is difficult. <laughs> it is difficult to, to, to have, uh, to communicate e exactly, uh, the intention I have in my heart and to be in contact with uh, my needs, with uh, to select uh, the posture, the, the words, and that will be um, less interpreted by the other person. And of course, it starts with myself. And uh, the reason why I put these circles uh, in the slide is because uh, for me, communication is, is basically what you put in common. So you, you, let's say we have this two, uh, the, the, the blue and the red person, and they put in common the yellow one. That's the, the common ground that they communicate. Um, so I like that idea of putting something in common common humanity in a sense and we can put in common uh, energy contribution emotions actions projects like if you go to a party then what will you bring so you, you hopefully we always bring something if we're, we're invited somewhere and this is basically how i see communication it's what 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 am i willing to to share and to put in common with myself, first of all, and with the other persons. And it is hard because you need to um, be in contact with your emotions, with your biases, with your reactions, uh, with, uh, so it, it is not easy to properly communicate and to, to be, aligned with the intention uh, we have. Um, but this is really um, uh, interesting and, and um, uh, profound subject, subject for me, how to communicate in a proper way uh, without being a technique. I will speak about it a bit because nonviolent communication can be pretty much like mindfulness, it can be um, seen as a tool, as a technique. If I speak in that way, then the person will understand me. Yes, but no, but because if your intention is not aligned with the word that you will use, then uh, it will show up uh, one way or another. Um, so it's 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 pretty uh, communication is 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 accessible and as difficult as mindfulness. I see a bridge between um, communication and mindfulness, and that's why we speak about mindful communication at the AMBA. We have this series of events, and it, it makes really sense. Um, 
so for me on on uh, if you see in this slide i've put on, on the left you have this very nice um uh, kind uh, animal which is used by uh, Marshall Rosenberg in nonviolent communication he uses these two um, these two ways of communicating the 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 harsh one and the the kind one basically uh, without being stuck in this good way and bad way to communicate but but on an on an individual level uh, what i try to bring in in prison with the the projects i work on with the trainings on an individual basis or as in a group setting it's always this process in a sense that um, we all have um, a superpower in in the brain that the facts that we perceive as facts we have feelings we have needs and the request is the last one it's an option but but basically we have this observation feelings and needs and the feelings emotions slash feelings are the way we communicate to ourselves. It's it's our triggers, and it's uh, what we communicate with others in order to contribute and and make stuff together and have this uh, understanding. So when my son uh, doesn't clean his room, for instance, uh, on a daily basis, I could just be angry and yell at him that's one option and and just use a shortcut in communication and they do that also sometimes because i trust that uh, i trust that uh, he will understand uh, some way or, or another that um, because he knows me a bit but I can yell at him and tell him, well, please, you haven't cleaned your room and be angry. Or I can tell, I could actually um, take a step aside if I'm pretty calm. <laughs> you need to be calm uh, a bit. You cannot uh, apply this or speak when you're angry because you need to keep, take care of the emotion. But if I'm pretty calm or I have this habit of getting back to myself, to my emotions, to what is what is screaming and what is triggered in me, I could also tell him that, okay, uh, this week, uh, Monday, Thursday and Friday, you haven't cleaned your room. That was the, the rule we had. And uh, that makes me angry because I have a need for respect or order or because we have common rules in the house. Uh, so could you please um, clean your room next time or tomorrow where you can? So that's, that's another way to, to basically uh, be aligned with my intention and my emotion of anger because my, my son hasn't cleaned his room by saying this in a way that will uh, not attack him directly because I will use, I will speak about myself, my needs, my emotions, and eventually, eventually there will be this request as an option. And the request needs really to be um, an open request. If it's, um, if that request if it's not possible to say no, then it's not a request, then it's a, it's an order. So basically, in a nutshell, that's that's the process of uh, nonviolent communication. And on the right, you have this, we have this uh, triangle of awareness that we we know as mindfulness teachers. We have the thoughts between 60 and 80,000 thoughts per day. Um, 
we don't uh, recognize uh, most of them. We recognize some of them. We have body sensations and then we have the emotions and and with awareness, whether it is uh, nonviolent communication or mindfulness, we can actually uh, become aware a bit uh, with the neocortex, we can become aware a bit of what's happening inside of us, what is triggered and the, the need that is satisfied or unsatisfied whether it is anger or uh, irritation or sadness. Um, I, I share this belief of Marshall Rosenberg and Carl Rogers that everybody tries to satisfy their needs and we just use different paths and routes to satisfy our needs. And we can speak about strategies. Um, so on an individual level, uh, in prison, I, I always um, try to facilitate this, uh, this loop of knowledge, of self-knowledge, so that persons can have some kind of elements on why they are triggered and so that they don't confuse the, the object of anger with their anger, so that they can actually recognize this loop they're in so that's important and of course we use formal mindfulness and an informal uh, mindfulness practices like mindful listening and speaking and or mindful movements or and others uh, practices um, So on, on an individual level, we really need uh, self-acceptance and self-compassion and self-empathy to have this compassionate relationship with ourself. And I see so much uh, harsh relationship of, of myself also sometimes with myself and people with themselves. So that's that's that that's a start. Oh, that's that's important, of course. Um, this this belief that people are, um, are fundamentally good, and they that they don't need fixing. There is nothing to fix, and that their knowledge or capacity is already there, and it just needs to be uh, watered by themselves and by the environment. So that's, that's a really strong belief I have in, uh, in human beings. And, and all, all uh, great traditions, whether it is shamanic or religious or non-religious, they have some kind of inner wholeness and inner goodness uh, uh, belief. So that's on the individual level, on the one-to-one uh, -one level, when it comes to communicate with other, with another person, then it's tricky. And it's tricky even with, with non-violent communication. It's tricky if we are in autopilot mode, if we are not aware of the thoughts, the feelings and uh, the actions and the behaviors. Uh, we have and um, the the relationship between the thoughts uh, we have uh, the feelings and the actions that it, it is all uh, linked in a sense so when I listen to someone uh, I was in in, in uh, Villepinte in prison this afternoon with with people I have trained so we can uh, we could assume that these people are really good listeners and they prefer to choose the path of peace than, than conflict. They're trained to be active listeners, to, to mediate conflicts and, and, and all of this. 
But still, this afternoon, um, there was almost a fight between two of them because they have a, um, an old story from a couple of years back. And one word triggered anger in one of the two persons. And, and this we can just not control. Uh, we can observe what is happening, but if the emotion is too strong, then there is no uh, valid technique except embracing, embracing and trying to, to stick with, with that difficult feeling, embracing it and trying to, to, to recognize it and observe it and, and to be soft and kind against yourself. Um, so interpersonal communication is difficult uh, because we met, we get triggered uh, very easily by other person's words and what we interpret. So we have a lot of representation biases and confirmation biases. If I have a, a fight with someone, I will much easily um, have a second fight because I, I assume the person is behaving in a certain way and and I will, it will, it's kind of a, a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, and that, that is a, a reality in, in the, the way our brain works, that this is the way we, our brain um, wants to have safety also, all these tags and the safety zone we put on, on persons. These biases are there for a good reason. So why did I put one plus one equal with three or one plus one is, is less than two? Because um, I have this belief that people um, can either contribute to something bigger than their individual self uh, as a human species or they can fight, and if they fight, if, if the, the balance, it's, it's, it's about, it's the, the end result is about fighting, then uh, it's less than it's the two persons together, they don't contribute to, to something uh, good. So that's, that's basically how I see interpersonal communication. It is difficult, it is possible. Uh, to communicate the right message if you're aligned with your intention uh, but it's it's important to recognize uh, what what triggers us and how easy it is to get stuck on the words on the interpretation side and just um, just switch uh, it, it is difficult to switch to the person and listen to the person and the, how the person lives the, the situation. Um, <clears throat> so, um, a lot of uh, persons in prison, um, they're stuck into uh, the, the drama triangle of Cartman, um, which we're all basically a bit stuck in the victim, the, uh, the rescuer, the persecutor, and, and it, it, is, it, it, it confirms, it's a loop, it's a drama zone, uh, and um, it, when it starts to spin, there is a black hole, actually, um, and it's about, just about confirmation. Um, the opposite triangle is what we use in, in, in emotional intelligence. Uh, it's the empowerment zone and triangle. Uh, but it's not easy to switch from one uh, loop to another because it's you need to. It's painful to recognize when we are uh, playing the the victim posture or the, we have the victim state of mind or when you have a victim then there is a 
rescuer that it kicks in or a persecutor um, so it's it this plays out in a, in a wonderful way it's like a wonderful movie so it's very very easy to get stuck into that uh, movie but if we um, recognize this and uh, practice some kind of mindfulness or some kind of of, of painful self-development then we can we can get out of this zone and enter this empowerment zone where you have a responsibility uh, where you can create uh, where you can coach uh, a person facilitate it's not easy but it is possible and <clears throat> If we um, get out of this uh, drama zone and enter this empowerment triangle, then we can we discover this landscape or this this space between the the emotions, experience, and 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 then we we're out of the prison, whether it is uh, a disease, whether it is. Uh, um, I visit a lot of sick persons, whether it is their disease or the fact that they are um, in prison it 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 waters waters the seeds of of uh, freedom actually um, so the the bad news is that um, if i get out of this uh, drama triangle i stop blaming external sources and objects and the situations and it's always the fault of someone external the good news is that we can have um, power and we can have agency over this so it's a different loop and it's a different path um, and we try to to make that shift i try to make that shift myself and I try to facilitate that small shift in, in others uh, because it's key. Because otherwise they just nourish that drama triangle again, again and again. Um, so that's the reason why I, I talk about inner and outer prisons. Because you can be in prison and you can be a very happy person despite the conditions if if you live and and you have a, a good relationship with those external conditions then you can have your piece of happiness and i, I like very much the um, these two arrows this zen story that um, i mean first arrow is life basically it's life with, with its beauty and and the fact that we will grieve, we will be sick, become sick, we will die, we have problems and this and that, stress, we can be in jail, we can be innocent and be in jail, which, which might be even more difficult for someone. Um, that's the first arrow. And the second arrow is basically, uh, that's where the control or the power is. And the freedom because it's it's about how you it's your choice it's our it's our choice how we uh, the size of that second arrow that's that's basically uh, the person that decides how that second arrow uh, is played out um, So that's basically the reason why I've been uh, bringing uh, yoga 10 years back and meditation and, and different kind of uh, emotional intelligence workshops or programs because I truly believe that uh, everybody has the potential to, to get out of this uh, drama uh, triangle and choose a path of uh, responsibility and self-knowledge um, so yeah some kind of internal freedom and choice is always possible for me <clears throat> uh, 
and um, and it's very joyful on the human level. It's very joyful if you put aside uh, all the judgments you, we can have on the person of what the person has done. If we um, stop uh, identifying the person with his behavior, then it's very easy to 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 make it joyful in, in this kind of context. So basically, that that's that's what I wanted to to share <laughs> with you, um, and um, <clears throat> I'm I, in the event page. I'm I, I talked about the uh, uh, the mindfulness trainings of uh, Plum Village of Zen Master Thich Thich Nhat Hanh, and there the. In the event page, you can actually read those uh, trainings about communication. I, I personally think that they make a lot of sense um, because uh, the essence is really about uh, listening deeply to ourselves, to the others, to try to listen without judgment. Um, and so, yeah, th those these trainings are a, a very important resource for me as a training. It's 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 there are trainings. So, um, so on the screen you have the eight mindfulness training. You can you can translate sangha with community or group. A sangha is just a community in Sanskrit and. It, it's, we don't need to get stuck in these um, Sanskrit words, but it's just a community. Um, and these training uh, are Buddhist, but um, we don't need to get stuck into uh, Buddhism. Uh, we certainly don't in, in Plum Village. We try not to be, get stuck into this. So for me, they are valid also for uh, lay people. Uh, the eighth uh, and the ninth mindfulness training are both on, on uh, communication and loving speech. So about this um, attention we give on the words and how it is difficult to to, to speak uh, truthfully, lovingly, and constructively, and only use words that inspire joy, confidence, and hope, and promote peace. This is a, a nice training, but it's difficult on a practical level. But it's, it's um, for me, it's like a kind of a, a polar star. It's like guidelines I try to have. Um, yeah, so basically that's what I wanted to, to share. Um, if you have uh, questions um, or uh, questions, yes, or if you want to share, uh, we can open up for sharing on um, how this rings for you. Uh, it can be questions, it can be comments, it can be I pretty much think that um, what is valid in, in prisons is valid in schools, in companies, in hospitals. It's, it's, it's just for me um, much easier to, uh, <coughs> to do what I do in prison because, because um, because I'm attracted to uh, that kind of uh, um, difficulty. Yeah, let's put it in this way. So, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's a driver for me to reduce the, somehow the, the suffering of the persons without being a savior, of course. Um, so, yeah, thanks, thanks for, for listening to me. <laughs> And, um, Shall so. we stop the screen sharing and then yes. we can uh, 
more yeah. easy to talk. Sure, sure. Uh, and I will remove the spotlight. Thank you, Eugenio. We You're will welcome. put everyone in spotlight now. Um, and have time to, um, yes, to get more stuff than you already shared. Yeah. Yeah, if you, if, if you, if you have questions, clarification questions. Here is Laura. Please, Laura, unmute yes. yourself. Good evening. Um, I was wondering, uh, how are you welcomed by uh, the administration and people who are in prison, but not because they are put in jail, but who are working there? And also, how are you seen by other prisoners who don't participate at your programs? Mm. So the first question is, 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 is uh, I can answer that. Um, well, there, there, there's a lot of uh, ideas and, 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 and there, there is a strong, uh, strong male, uh, I don't know in other countries, but I guess it's pretty much the same in, in prisons. It's, it's 1% woman and 99% man, which is not the, the, the picture of the population. So it's a very uh, male population and uh, the codes and the way of communicating. And that, that is also with the staff, with the prison, with the guards. They have the, the same kind of culture and same kind of, of codes. So I, I, get, I get good feedback I, 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 because I work with prisoners, but I work also with the staff. I'm, I'm very sensitive to, to the mirror effect because, because at the end of the day, the, the, the guard will, will go back home to his family and it's a job it's a day job and but 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 in the morning is the one opening the, the the cell is the one that is can listen to the person or so they it they, it's it's they play a very important role and i try to mix i try to mix those populations i'm always so happy when um, um, someone that works in prison wants to participate in, in, in my group setting. And I had the case a couple of weeks back, uh, a, a very nice uh, guard. He was like, can I, can I join in? And he was actually sharing his experience. So he, he, took, he took out the hat of the security guard and there he was sitting and sharing. So usually it's, it's, um, it's, it's, um, they they are welcoming now they have we have so many uh, problems in prison that there is space for this uh, for the, the person working there and for prisoners so that's um, uh, yeah I'm, I'm, uh, but of course of course it's they, they pay some kind of death to the to the to society, so uh, it's there's a lot of suffering in the image that the security guards what they think about prisoners and what prisoners think about security guards and I, I go into that direction a lot. I try to deconstruct uh, what they think of each other because it's at the end of the day they they're just human beings and. So, um, so it's, it's, um, that was the, the first question. And the second question was, yeah. The other prisoners yeah. who can participate at your groups, uh, because they made the choice not to come. Uh, are they changing their minds, seeing the, their um, peers? going to your groups or what happened to them some of them some some of them it's it's we, i think i think uh, denis which is here is, is uh, bringing mindfulness in prison as well i think we water seeds we water seeds uh in the environment in in, in the the persons we interact with and and so 
so the other prisoners that don't participate they 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 get uh, curious about the that and uh, because the, there are not so many activities in prison that's that's the reality we have uh, in France and other countries we don't I mean they out of 24 hours they there are like 22 hours in their cell so they they subscribe to whatever activity theater uh, mindfulness <laughs> uh, yoga and then they discover um, and then they discover if it's something for them and so yeah it's it's a huge difference if you do regular courses every week or if you do a program for instance uh, like mbsr or these kind of programs but yeah it's 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 i've i've seen a big big change in the mindset of the uh, of the prison administration that they're really open and they're willing to experiment a lot of different uh, practices because they see the benefits they see the benefits in the uh, rate of violence they see the benefits in the ratio of uh, people not getting back to a path of trouble because the, the statistics are just awful it's like 70 percent in france that that get out and that get get in again so this is just we, we need to, to take this into account yeah stasi you had a question thanks can you unmute yourself stasi please? yes please i said thank you a <laughs> very interesting models you shared especially the one with drama and empowerment but i was thinking more about the specifics like um do you do programs or you meet the same people on a regular basis forever like as long as you are there and i'll tell you why i'm asking this question um oh you want me to answer the question first or yes please Oh, I do individual and I do group setting. I've been, I've been, I've been for four years. I, I, I was um, every week. I was going to um, a violent uh, unit in Chateaudun, and I had, uh, of course, because of the pandemics, I want, I've, I've used to do group group settings, but yeah. it's not possible. So it's individual basis people that we follow for nine months so uh, but i do group settings and i, I I'm, I'm i'm just happy to uh, with the hours i have in prison to i have i have a complete freedom not complete but i have a lot of freedom in what i do um yeah so so yeah, so, yeah I, I uh thank you i mean it seems that you found fruit freedom more freedom in prison <laughs> that that's very interesting to contemplate but um the uh the programs if if um i'm asking because um i know that certain people would feel really almost near getting new trauma when a program like that finishes at the end and i've had a case like this not with prisoners but yeah it 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 was a different story but uh so i was i was wondering if if that's just a, a support that's ongoing and these are a short session group or individual that that are not limited by a number of weeks like mbsr like a program or just going on and on because definitely i guess uh, the need is there and it will be there forever. Um, and, and, and people really react, uh, very emotionally upon an end of a program. Um, and so I was interested in that. And the other question, it's also related to that. Some people are, um, I guess depression or, or these, uh, psychological mental health issues are very high in percentage in in prison 
So there by definition, can they participate in mindfulness meditations or not advisable? So how do you, or who takes them out of these and, and tells them, no, you cannot join this because it's not good for you, your health? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good question. I think we have the same, I, I have the same kind of um, attention level on, on this, meaning that um, there is a high percentage of people that should be in a hospital and not in prison. Let's face it, it's, I mean, it might be 20%, 30%, but we, when I was uh, doing these individual interventions, sometimes people in front of me, I mean, they, they were not violent with me, never. I have had this privilege of, of just having this, uh, but, but um, they shouldn't be there. They should be, they should get uh, some kind of, of, of care or, and, and, and so the, the lack of, of psychiatrists and psychologists in prison is, is, is screaming. It's, it's just amazing. And of course, uh, we, uh, to buy a social peace in France, at least, uh, there's a lot of addictions on cannabis, for instance, is forbidden in France. But if when, when you're in prison, you just, uh, the smell is so strong. And sometimes people, they just, so they, they, they to cope to cope so it's 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 a it's a real issue um i i always base myself on what i do outside if the person is i feel that the person is stable enough to to try then it's it's and if the person is, has some kind of internal motivation then then let's 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 try, uh, but but it's it's really uh, sometimes uh, not easy to to have some formal practice. It's it's more about informal practice. And now now I have this program over ten weeks in in uh, of in emotional intelligence based on mindfulness, and um, there were like. 15 in the beginning now they're four and then we we some of them they don't want to because they think meditation so it's it's like an airport and so it's it i, I uh, so i'm doing basically workshops uh, new fresh workshops every week with them and that's okay for me because uh, uh, uh so yeah, we want to sell programs, but uh, as you say, it's 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 good to have programs and regular practices or regular uh, circles that that are safe. Uh, I try to to have this safe setting so that they can actually forget that they are in prison. And yeah, thanks. Magdalena, thank you. I don't really have a question, but can't resist not to share. Uh, I'm a psychologist and I actually spent 29 years working in prison, <laughs> different settings with young girls, with uh, mostly with young girls. And your story brought so much uh, memories to me, although I've been retired now for 15 years, but I do agree. Uh, Nonviolent communication, teaching communication skills to staff and prisoners is so crucial and it, it is possible. It's after 20 years spent, spent there, I know it is possible, but you need uh, a lot of work, you need teams, you need people, and when they see this is possible, then think, uh, things work. So this is the only thing I wanted to share. <laughs> uh, just one little scene. I came to work Sunday afternoon, which was the most difficult, always Sunday afternoon, and the girls I was working with were waiting with a coffee in front of my uh, office, telling me we want a workshop, which meant 
they didn't fight. <laughs> they did have agreement, didn't fight. But learn, we can do it through the workshop. So that was success. Little one, but success. <laughs> so uh, my honor to all your work. <laughs> Thanks, Magdalena. Yeah, it's, it's, it's about small. It's, it's about very small things. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yes, I would like to ask a question. Um, you said that since there is so little activity and there, and there are so, so many hours, um, it's well known that also in companies, uh, people register for uh, workshops or trainings because it's a way to get out of the boredom of a certain, uh, certain jobs. So uh, in essence, what I hear is first they register because they're bored. But then how do you make the switch from the negative um, motivation to a positive motivation of participating in a way that it is helpful for them? How do you frame what you offer so they can make that switch? Um, it, 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 it only works if, if, if they do the experience that this is something that's potentially good for me. So it needs it needs to come from their experience. It's 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 never about uh, you should do this or you should you should speak nonviolently or you should practice mindfulness. It's 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 always um, experiential. It's an experience. Uh, the shift. The, the, the sh I have no I have no expectations actually. Not many expectations um so it's it's um i get a lot of surprises sometimes that because people they really um it's it's about their experience uh, that's that's how they make the switch and i just try to uh, help them to make the switch For, uh, this afternoon there was two guys they they're trained by me on active listening they know what needs to be done not to get into a fight and, and and the fight was actually in front of my eyes so we had to 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 separate them and one was angry and i have no advice to give uh, to that person just so but we talked we we talked individually and i said okay now you're angry and and and, and so you just want to fight back and mm, is it useful? So it's, it's about actually uh, 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 coaching the, the emotional side. I think that's, that's the, the, what I do actually. I, I try to, 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 to listen to the, the emotions and, and, and that's that's uh, so that they can listen their own emotions and that they can trigger and 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 they can understand their own where they're stuck actually and they can recognize i mean it's it's always about recognition you know it's if we don't recognize where we are then we cannot go anywhere so if they don't recognize that they are in in a loop you know, some kind of loop so I just I, I provide tools and practices so that they can uh, start recognizing that. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, in Belgium, we had uh, I, I got um, association with uh, a training with it with uh, adolescent uh, adolescents who um, applied for asylum, and um, all of them were traumatized on tranquilizers and painkillers. And we could, we by the way, we did train them together with the people that, uh, let's say, watch them. Um, but uh, it was not possible to do uh, things like uh, mindfulness. So we did a lot of movement. 
um, like mindful football, mindful boxing, uh, and then mindful walking to gradually go there. And one of the people that I know who work in prisons, he's um, an Aikido master. And he says that words and uh, our the, the way we are sitting here, our trust in words and in being able to express emotions is much overrated. And what he does is um, he shows people how to uh, uh, polarize their, their energy differently by teaching them Aikido movements. And so they experience in their body uh, how they can redirect their energy. And by allowing them to, uh, to find that technique and to experience not in their head, but in their body, how the energy is released, um, they also become more calm and open their minds for things they, they, they might want to share or might want to listen to. I see you nodding and you're also a yoga teacher. So um, maybe it was not really, really a question. It was an implicit question about whether you are using movements to yeah, yeah. correct their energies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you move movements. Yes, um, yes. Of course, if if it if it can can be an entry point. Of course, mindful movements or any kind of any kind of of body uh, mind practice like qigong or tai chi or yoga. It, it's or boxing or any kind of of entry point. Of course, yes. It is key. <clears throat> Thanks. I would just like to add when I retired and found mindfulness, I said, why on earth no one told me that before? <laughs> <laughs> because I would, uh, but what I would add is connection with another human being on a basis that is not an order and you know from here is crucial. And it is possible in little situation, and then you can go more easily. Yeah, connection is key. Also, yes, yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that's 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 what they tell me. It's like you're. I I, I don't have I don't have the authority. I'm not. I, I come from the outside. I come, and they're just so grateful for that. That's that's just that's so grateful for the human connection, and they they ask me about my kid and. And my kid is doing comics about prison because I talk about him and I bring the comics in prison and I show them and they give me a lot of gifts and, and, and drawings. So, so it's, 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 it's about the connection, actually. That's, that's very important. Yeah. The connection. And my thought at that time was, although I had this kind of authority, I was employed there as a, as a psychologist, but when you turned the rule, something that is a boundary for you and for her, can we make connection inside that rule? I can't open the door and let you go out. It's not impossible, but can we in this uh, bound within this boundary make an action? And it is possible yeah. when you train stuff uh, in this way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and I'm 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 a huge believer of um, inside inside out model. I think that a lot of people that are in prison can actually. Um, train themselves to be to become teachers in the us there's a lot of, of yoga and mindfulness teacher training so that they become so that they, they they have this 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 possibility and power so so i think i i, I think uh, it's important yeah actually there are a few biographies of people who have been in prison for a long time and who have started studying there, even the illiterate people to start uh, started to be able to read and write. And with the present internet situation, I mean, one of our grandchildren is taking a course to be a flight uh, instructor. He's only 15. 
And so it, people in prison have time to study and yeah. to become uh, also cognitively uh, or further developed. But the combination of having that time and having the possibility, like you just said, uh, Magdalena, to have uh, been introduced to mindfulness earlier on, well, it's great that you and Denis, you, you're doing this work and uh, making sure that when people get out, they have another a way of getting uh, back into society, communicating maybe in a different way and uh, maybe also living more consciously and more mindfully. So when um, we frame this as a contribution to mindful society, I really hear how you are doing that in, uh, in presence. Mm. Thanks. So thank you both for doing that. Yeah, thank you. I feel that I should um, say something. There's so many things I would like to share. I don't know where to go. And thank you, Eugenio, for sharing your practices and your approach. And, um, for me, I'm so, I've been one year now going to prison and to meet uh, uh, with the prisoners. And um, it stopped now for several reasons. One is budget but, and one is a, uh, or some inner problematic in, in within the prison where I had to stop actually. And it's very, I, I feel very sad because I was having a, a regular group and I was having like elders um, that were there since, I don't know, with me every week since five months maybe. And we were really going into uh, some very deep practice. And I had another group with newcomers and when an old one was leaving because changing prison or getting to freedom, then I would take another one from the new group and come back to the old group. So there was a nice continuity and we were about to send 1,000 fire to all the, all the, uh, the prisoners because there's 1,000 uh, prisoners in that prison. Um, but it's, it's so such a beautiful word, world uh, there for bringing mindfulness practice. It's just like I, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching meditation since 17 years, but it was the first time that I was going there. And it's so meaningful there. Uh, maybe it's one of the best places I've ever seen uh, because uh, they, they really, some of them really need and they're craving for uh, tools and, and ways of thinking differently because they fear to get back into the same trap when they go out. They want to change somehow. They want to change their mind. They want to grow. They want to learn. And so little is given to them, as Eugenio was saying. And I don't, in Belgium, uh, I'm from Belgium and I've looked a little bit in the system. And there are some prisons, I don't know in France how it is with the internet access. And, but in France, it's so, well, at least in Béziers, where I was working, it's a nightmare. They don't even cannot even go to the library. I had books in the library uh, with a jet like Thich Nhat Hanh. I, I I had uh, twenty four five books on meditation in library, and they could not access the library and, and read the books. And so there there's such so much in despair of learning, reading, and and you know changing. And it's, so it, it it's. I recognize in, in you, Virginia, when you uh, when you speak, the enthusiasm, and for me it was just so much a mixture of enthusiasm and sadness about, because it's a lot of young people coming from poor background backgrounds who arrived there because it was it's not planned, but it's like the society is made so that they had no future, they had no the the they're from difficult backgrounds with uh, maybe fathers eating them, drinking, and, and um, no future kind of. And then they steal a car and then they fall into that crazy world. So when you arrive with meditation, and they, there's a lot of enthusiasm for them. They really go for it. They really go for it. Maybe more than in the outside public that I, I met. And they have 
more time and there's more suffering. So they need it more. So it's, it's just fantastic to do that there. Yeah, thank you. And obviously I was mistaken about the access to learning, at least in that prison that you described, but uh, yeah. I, I had a totally different impression from a reading from some people who had learned a lot while in prison, but it's not true in your experience. Yeah. No, it is in prison. Uh, it's very limited, very, very limited. It's hard to get a book sort of, for, for some, some of them. I don't know, Eugenio, what's your experience? Well, it's, it's, um, I have maybe the, the, the ones that, that, that I have in the right now, they, it's difficult to go to the library and, and, and it's difficult, but some of them, I, I'm, I'm so grateful when I hear that they, they study and they, they do stuff. They, 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 a lot of people, a lot of people start reading in prison. Yeah, start reading and start doing stuff they didn't do before. And I know that some people at the beginning, they don't like that. And then, 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 then they start to like that. And then they, they, they start reading a lot. And then there's in, in Villepinte where I, I worked, they have this, um, um, a, a reading, um, uh, contest. So, the, the, a lot of of, the, of them, but but of course it's just not not all of them. They get to participate by reading books, a lot of books, and then they have a jury, and so it's it's. Um, but but it's it's not so much. That's the thing. It's not so much compared to the all the population. It's uh, most of them. They they don't they they they, they never get this kind of opportunity. So. Yeah. So that's 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 sad, and yeah, it's like you say, Denis, need that they have a lot of time, but 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 it's um, it's it's uh, it's it's difficult. So yeah, so yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and and of course, I, 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 what I can say that. I, I, as soon as I hear that they do theater, they do stuff like that, I'm so happy because I know that it 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 fills them with joy and with sense. And this this guy I'm I'm having right now, he, he was uh, they they were doing um, a theater uh, representation in Paris. Uh, so they get, they get out of prison and they, 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 they practice for months and then they do this in, in a theater and it's just amazing the effect on them on, on, on all levels like elocution the, the way they speak the way they behave and it's 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 it gives them so a different perspective on on a lot of things so this is but it's it's just the minority that that have this kind of, of possibility, um, but, but yeah. What I really like about uh, the title of your presentation is uh, the inner and outer prisons. When uh, when I studied medicine, they used to say to us, you don't have to uh, uh, develop cancer to become an oncologist. So mm -hmm. here we don't have to go to prison to have the benefits that you just described. We can uh, simply do it while having uh, relative freedom, maybe not freedom from our inner presence, but at least we have freedom from outer presence. Uh, it's uh, all, all you describe is available for uh, people outside of prisons as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. The, the differences that you just described, uh, people getting a theater, I see uh, children and adolescents who are shy getting into theater and they change. So it's uh, it's the getting out of your so-called normality that uh, that really helps and that can be inspiring also for us as we are here and the other people that uh, the other colleagues that will uh, look at uh, this recording. Mm. I realize that we have stretched the time, Ejania, that you said you would. Uh, want to be here 
uh, a bit, like um, almost 20 minutes. So I would like to suggest that we do a last round of uh, comments and questions and then uh, together close uh, this inspirational in, uh, meeting. Who would like to, I mean, we are all smiles. Okay, that's one answer. <laughs> Um, anyone would like some uh, time to make another comment or ask a question? We're still here. I can't resist. <laughs> I'm at home. <laughs> uh, I'm very much surprised to hear that prisoners don't have access to literature. My experience 15 years ago is totally different. Education, getting information was something at least when I was working, very uh, that was the very important thing. And last year I had a, a mindfulness workshop, a mindfulness training with a, a female prison here in the city where I live. One of these prisoners were working in a library because she has multiple sclerosis, so due to her. And they didn't have a lot of time. They were all working because they have a working time inside the prison. And we had this in the afternoon, they were tired, and they were engaged in little organiz organizational things in, in prison, and they could read if they wanted to. And about inner prison, one of these participants told me in one of the inquiries, I have a choice. And I said, the whole workshop was worth because of this sentence, I have a choice. <laughs> yeah, I have a choice. Yes. Thank uh, you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Magdalena. Well, I have a choice. Is the is the is the sentence of the of tonight? It always um sounds as yes we can. So um let's celebrate that we all have choices. Mm -hmm. Any more comments before we close? No, only not. Thank you, Eugenio, Denis. Thank you. But also for the participation and comments. It's always nice that we are together in this and that as a speaker, we do not only uh, want something from you, but we also give back our experiences to you. Uh, it's the only reward we give. And uh, so we are happy for everyone uh, spending time here and for having learned uh, one more thing uh, and having been reminded, we have a choice. With that, I wish you a very good evening and look forward to see you back. We have another meeting on mindful communication on the 3rd of April with Eric from the uh, von den Brink. Uh, he's a Dutch psychiatrist, uh, very much working with uh, compassion training and he will talk about interpersonal mindfulness. So please feel welcome. And until then, be well and use your freedom of choice. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.